Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 2020 BMW Z4 M40i. My goal for this video is to give you all a total point of view walkthrough of the entire car from the engine to the trunk and everything in between. It's going to be a lot of fun. Also, this is bound to come up. The new Toyota Supra and the Z4 were basically co-developed between BMW and Toyota, so there's a lot of similarities between them. I'm not going to go into an in-depth comparison, but a while back, I was fortunate enough to go to the Toyota media launch for the Supra. I have a full video of it, so if you'd like to check that out and compare it for yourself, I put the link in the description box below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Like a lot of vehicles nowadays, the Z4 comes standard with a smart key entry system. So as long as you have the key fob in your pocket, you can use the touch sensors on both doors to lock and unlock the vehicle. Now the Z4 though takes it one step further by offering a totally hands-free feature. So as long as you have the key fob on you, you just walk up to the car and it will automatically unlock itself and fold out the mirrors. It still has the buttons on the door handles, but that's just a pretty cool feature. Of course, when you walk away from the car, it will lock itself and fold the mirrors in. The Z4 is offered with quite a nice color palette, including a frozen gray treatment for M Sport models. There's also a few upholstery options, including synthetic leather upholstery, a combination of leather and Alcantara, and full leather like you see here. This car has ivory white leather. You've got to admit, this exterior color is pretty fantastic. It's called Misano Blue Metallic. It's one of the optional colors. The M40i starts at $63,700, but this example is pretty well equipped. You not only have the optional color, but you have upgraded 19-inch wheels, the premium package, the executive package, the driving assistance package, and when you take into account destination and handling, you're looking at just over $70,000. All right, let's hop on in. In order to start, you have to make sure you have the key fob within the interior. Then just put your foot on the brake, find the button in the center console, and press it down to go. This thing sounds so good. Like the regular Z4, the M40i sends its power to the rear wheels through an 8-speed electronically controlled automatic transmission with a set of steering wheel paddle shifters. The controller in the center console is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is put your foot on the brake, hit the little unlock button on the left side, and pull it all the way back for drive. Here is where you can activate sport mode for the transmission as well as manual shifting. If you're in drive and just tap it over to the left, that sport mode. It basically just holds gear changes a little bit longer and keeps the engine more in its power band for spirited driving. If you push the lever forward or pull it back, that activates manual shifting. Back for upshifts, forward for downshifts. You can do the same thing putting it in manual mode by just tapping one of the paddles. Now if you push it all the way forward, that places the car in reverse and neutral is right in the middle. When the car is in reverse, a backup camera appears with dynamic guidance lines as well as a visual representation of your proximity sensors. To place the car in park, just hit the little P button on the back of the controller. The driving modes include Sport, Sport Plus, Comfort, Eco Pro, and Adaptive. 
Adaptive alters the various vehicle parameters based on your driving style. Eco Pro prioritizes fuel economy. Comfort is more day-to-day -day type use. And Sport and Sport Plus is just heightened levels of more performance-oriented behavior. You probably already saw that Sport and Eco Pro both have these individual sub-modes. They allow for extra personalization, especially for sport mode because you can dial in exactly how you want the car to behave. With EcoPro, you can control which of the eco-minded features are operating in the background. You can also firm up the steering or dampers if you want, so you can still have a little bit of sporty behavior, but get better fuel economy. The instrument cluster is fully digital and it's a really cool design. There's some performance gauges and other vehicle data that you can bring up off to the right. You can pull up your navigation in the middle and it changes layouts based on which drive mode you're in. Comfort is the standard layout. Then you have Eco Pro and of course Sport. In the center console, you also have the iDrive controller in the top right, which I'll talk more about in just a moment. You have the convertible top switch, an electronic parking brake with auto hold feature, and in the top right, your proximity sensors, auto start stop feature, and traction control. Traction control actually has three different modes. Fully on, which is the default. You have a traction mode, which has less innervation. And if you hold down the traction button for a few seconds, you can turn it off completely. So I've talked about a lot of driving features so far and there's still a bunch of stuff to go over, but let's switch gears for a moment and talk about this interior because it is really, really nice. As you would expect for something of this price point, the build quality is fantastic. Everywhere you touch, there's soft padded material. There's also some really nice detailing with the stitched upper dashboard, stitched upper and middle portions of the door panels, if you didn't want the gloss black trim that comes standard, there's also a variety of aluminum finishers. You have that satin silver trim, plus a bunch of two-tone color options. I really like these seats too. Fully powered, these are the M Sport seats. You actually have manual thigh support up there, but four-way power lumbar, as well as power side bolstering adjustment. Despite what you may think initially, being a small roadster, these seats are very comfortable. They're supportive and have just the right padding where it matters the most. Plus, they look cool. You got that diamond quilted-like detailing up there with built-in headrests. The seat rails have been extended by nearly an inch, so you have greater adjustability than you did with the previous Z4. Unless you were trying to get behind the seat for some reason, you would typically leave the seat belt in its little holder right here. It makes it a lot easier to grab when you're sitting in the seat. Coming at you from the passenger side now, let's talk about some storage space. The glove box is locking and it's also damp so it won't fly open and hit you in the shins. It's lined in felt and has a modest amount of space. The forward portion of the console has this lid that you can push back to reveal one of the optional features, a wireless phone charging pad, there's a little tray right there, a 12 volt power outlet, and a USB port. It also says Z4 on the lid. There's slender door pockets and a little net on the passenger side of the transmission tunnel. The center console is a split design, just press the button up here. Inside you have a pretty good amount of space, a USB port, and two cup holders. If you bring the seats forward, you'll see that there is a little bit of storage space between the seats and the rear bulkhead. There's also a net to keep everything in place. In between those speakers is a trunk pass-through, so if you are carrying longer items, you can open up that compartment and stick things all the way up to the front. On the passenger side, down below behind the seat, is a child seat anchor point. Up top, you have your roll bars as well as a wind buffeter. There's storage pockets behind the seats too. I almost forgot about this. On the left hand side of the dash you have a small cubby. I think it's pretty impressive just how much trunk space they were able to carve out of this thing considering that it has a folding roof. Total volume back here is 9.9 .9 cubic feet. That alone is not what really impressed me the most. It was the fact that regardless if you have the top up or the top down, 
this space doesn't change because the top has its own little cubby so you don't have to worry about compromising your practicality if you want to drive around all day with the top down. The trunk is LED lit. There's a compartment on the right side as well that houses some roadside assistance gear as well as a fuse block. On the other side, there's a small storage well, probably just big enough to put an owner's manual, a little net to secure whatever you got over there, as well as another elastic band over there to secure something else that's small. There's also a handful of cargo tie downs. As far as audio, there's two different systems available. The standard system consists of 10 speakers putting out a total of 205 watts. However, this one has the optional 12 speaker Harman Kardon system with 464 watts. Okay, now let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about the engine. To pop the hood, just pull the lever twice. There's no catch that you have to undo at the front. It's all done here, so super convenient. Just in case you aren't already familiar with the Z4 lineup, the standard model is the S-Drive 30i. That car is powered by a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that puts out 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. The M40i is a completely different animal. It too is turbocharged, but instead of being a four cylinder, it's a three liter straight six cylinder. It puts out 382 horsepower between 5,000 and 6,500 RPM and 369 pound-feet of torque between 1,600 and 4,500 RPM. The M40i can accelerate to 60 miles an hour in about 3.9 seconds, while the S-Drive 30i can do the same deed in about 5.2 seconds. The M40i is not a full-blown M product, it's what's called an M performance model, so it's like what the M550i is to the M5. Almost an M product, you still get a lot more capability and upgraded equipment over a regular model, but it's still not a full-blown M product. Some of the key upgrades for the M40i is not only the larger, more powerful engine, but larger brakes, the M Sports differential, specific transmission calibrations, and more. As far as fuel economy, estimates range between 24 miles per gallon in the city and 31 miles per gallon on the highway. You can expect an average somewhere around 26 miles per gallon, which, if you ask me, is pretty awesome for something like this. Premium fuel is, of course, required. Total tank capacity is 13.7 gallons. All right, let's wrap up the interior by talking about some tech. BMW's latest generation iDrive system comes standard. It's a 10 inch diagonal screen that's actually a touch screen, which is pretty nice, but like all of the previous iDrive iterations, there's also a rotary controller in the center console. On top 
of the rotary controller is a touchpad, so you can use that with a variety of the features like navigation. Just go up, back, left, right, push down, twist left and right. It's pretty straightforward. You also have a bunch of shortcut buttons for primary features. You can literally make an entire video on how to use iDrive. There's so many features packed in, it's just it's impossible to cover it all, but there's a lot of personalization settings. There's also some pretty cool sport displays. I really like that. G-Force meter, instantaneous power, energy flow. You have every media option you could ask for, including a built-in hard drive so you can store music on the system. Communication, navigation. This system also has apps built in. A fully independent dual zone climate control system comes standard on the M40i. You not only have the ability to adjust temperature between the driver and passenger, but the zones that it's coming out of. You also have three stage heated seats. All of the interior lighting is LED, but there's also a lot of accent lighting that goes across the dashboard, the center console, and the door panels. It's very pretty at night. It's also fully customizable. You can change the color to whatever suits your fancy. Adjust the brightness. If you don't want it on, you can also turn it off. On either side of the A pillars, there's small microphones for the hands-free telephone system so everybody can be heard equally. Of course, the steering wheel is fully wrapped in leather. You have big grip bolsters at 2 and 10. It's manually adjustable for both tilt and reach. The airbag cover is wrapped in leather and you have bright silver spokes. Down below, heated steering wheel activation, cruise control on the far left with a speed limiter, as well as all of your radio, hands-free telephone, and voice commands on the right. It's a little hard to see in the daylight with the camera, but this one has the optional heads-up display. Now let's go ahead and talk about the exterior. First, we'll flip on the lights. All of the lighting controls are on the left-hand side of the dash. Full LED exterior lighting comes standard, but this one also has an adaptive front lighting system with automatic high beams. Turn the lights off of auto by that button right there, and the hazards are right in the middle. The new Z4 was first launched as a 2019 model, only as the S-Drive 30i. The M40i is new for 2020. The new Z4 was completely redesigned from the ground up. The design language is a lot sleeker and more low slung than before, even though the overall car is actually quite a bit bigger than before. Overall length is increased by 3.3 inches, width is increased by 2.9 inches, while height is increased by 0.5 inches the wheelbase actually shrinks by one inch. The front and rear tracks are also significantly wider, 3.86 inches wider in front and 2.45 inches wider in the rear. The M40i is a couple hundred pounds or so heavier than the S-Drive 30i. Total curb weight is just over 3,400 pounds and that curb weight is split even 50-50 between the front and the rear. The M40i gets a more aggressive front fascia treatment with larger air intakes, styled side skirts, a more aggressive rear bumper to complement the front, as well as a rear diffuser with black chrome exhaust tips. You'll also notice a satin gold color on the grille, the side intakes on the front fascia, the mirrors, the roll bars, and the emblems. As far as wheels, you have two different sizes to choose from and a handful of styles. 18s come standard, 9 inches wide in front and 10 inches wide in the rear. This car has the optional 19 inch wheels. They're the same width. The tires are Michelin Pilot Super Sports, 255 35s in front and 275 35s in the rear. The new Z4 benefits from a thoroughly redesigned suspension that takes advantage of a lot of aluminum construction to help reduce unsprung weight. The front setup consists of a double joint spring strut suspension while the rear is a five link suspension. Like I was saying earlier, this one also has the four corner adaptive dampers which not only lowers ride height about 10 millimeters or so compared to the standard setup, but it gives you the ability to firm up the shock absorbers on demand. It's either comfort or sport. The car is pretty stiff already, but sport is a pretty noticeable difference. It's not something that you're going to want to use on a day-to-day -day basis because over rougher roads, it does get a little 
jarring sometimes, but overall the car is pretty well balanced. It's a sports car after all, you expect it to be a little bit firm. Like I said a second ago, this car also has a significantly wider track than the previous C4, so the footprint is massive in comparison. You know, almost four inches wider in front and about two inches wider in the rear. It is so stable and planted and corners flat. Like, BMW truly engineered this to be a real all-out sports car that you could legit drive on the track and just have all sorts of fun with without having any compromise going on because of having a convertible top. It's literally the best of both worlds. When you put the top up, it's not like super quiet. It's not as quiet as the Supra, which is, you know, a hard top with the hatch out back, but I think if you're looking for something that's just all around fun and you live somewhere where you have pretty good climates. <laughs> you also can't hear that in the Supra. <laughs> that is so cool. It's just a totally different experience without having the roof on. Being able to hear that exhaust and all the crackling happening. Golly, I love it. The main thing that I did not want to do in this video was make a Supra comparison video and like how this is like this and blah 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 because everybody and their brother has an opinion about the whole Supra Z4 relationship and I'm just not getting into that but based on my experience with driving the Supra the two cars are very similar in how they feel you know it's, it's only so different it could get with you know basically the same powertrain and, and platform but the experience of the car the design of the car the BMW feels a lot more upscale it's you know got some more class I think the design is prettier you know all of the, the typical stuff that you would just expect to ha get with a, a higher end brand but that being said the Z4 M40i actually produces more power than the Supra. It's widely known that Toyota kind of underrated the Supra. I think it was rated at like 335 horsepower and dyno numbers are putting out around like 350. Well, this is 380 something. So BMW definitely kept a little bit of an edge with this car. Um, I guess, you know, just to kind of you know, separate things a bit. But in the real world, you don't notice like a massive difference in performance between the one or the other. Um, I just, I just love, I just love this experience. It's, it's a lot of fun. So the Z4's eight-speed automatic does receive revisions for this new generation. You have shorter gearing in the lower gears for a little bit, you know, peppier acceleration and whatnot. But the biggest differences in the transmission really boil down to the different models. So the M40i, being more performance oriented, has you know a, a more a performance algorithm to the transmission. So it's going to shift a little sharper. It's going to behave a little quicker. It's um. You know just to take advantage of everything the car is capable of doing another nice thing too the top so this top goes up and down in 10 seconds it's super quick and it can be done at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour as well so I was gonna do this while I was moving but you can just see how quick it is here and that's it Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2020 BMW Z4 M40i. Be sure to stay tuned next time, subscribe today if you haven't already, and be sure to leave a like below, it really helps the channel a lot. Also, don't forget, hit that notification bell so you can get properly notified of all of the new uploads. Thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.